Hello again. Are you there? Hi. Hello, hello. I like your smile. Hello, hello. Won't you stay a while? Won't you stay a while? Would you like some of my English classes? So I'm going to give you a class now. Es por eso. That's why I'm rolling up my sleeves. He perdido. Marta, estoy en antena. I'm, am, I, am I on the air? I, I, can, I can see the camera, but I can't see anything else. So I'm rolling up my sleeves because it's time to get to work, to get down to work, to get down to business. Manos a la obra, si dice en español. To get down to work, to get down to business. Yes, stop beating around the bush. Yeah, stop dilly-dallying, stop beating around the bush. It's interesting. Déjate de ir por los cerros de Úbeda. Esta expresión no lo, no lo conoce, conocen ustedes en Latinoamérica. In the south of Spain, in Andalusia, there are a lot of very beautiful cities and towns. And two very interesting towns, very beautiful and very interesting towns in the province of Jaén are called Baeza y Úbeda. And they're very near each other. And they are rivals. Rivalizan. They're always fighting. Okay. Now, Úbeda is very interesting because it's a Renaissance architecture. Arquitectura Renacimiento. Úbeda. Now, around Úbeda, Úbeda, <laughs> there are hills, colinas, cerros, montañas pequeñas. And, they say, and there's an expression in Spain. No vayas por los cerros de Úbeda. Los cerros, cerros, con el CC, la C española. Los cerros de Úbeda. That means no andes con rodeos. Mira, ve al grano. Al grano, come on, get, get to the point. Don't beat around the bush. To beat is, to beat is golpear. También es golpear una persona, to beat somebody. Puede ser una palabra muy mala. But to beat also is ganarle a uno, derrotar. Te te gané. I beat you, I beat you. But to beat also is de dar golpes. Boom, 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 boom. And to beat around the bush. Bush en este caso no es arbusto, es el monte bajo. Porque en España y en otros países hay ciertos bosques que son más de, se llama monte bajo, brush forests, bush forests. Y hay mucho ciervo y jabalí y corzo y otros animales de caza. Entonces entran con, haciendo ruido, beating, y su, asustan los animales, los pobres, y los canalizan hacia donde están los cazadores. Eso se llama montería en España. Sin embargo, es un, tipo, es un tipo de caza que existe en muchísimos países del mundo. Ahora bien, no soy gran amante de la caza, pero vamos, esa expresión viene del mundo de la caza. Don't beat around the bushes, no, no des batidas por el monte bajo, por el bosque. ¿Eh? That means, no andes por los cerros de Úbeda, no vayas por los cerros de Úbeda en España. No sé lo que dicen en México, Perú, Argentina, Chile, Paraguay, o donde sea, o Colombia. I don't know. Don't beat around the bush. Get to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point. Get to the point is al grano, eh? Al medio de esta cuestión. No, and, no andes con rodeos. Let's not waste any time. No perdamos el tiempo, eh? I don't like wasting time. So, uh, Kirne is here. I, my, my people are starting to write to me. Hello, hello. Hi there, Richard. Richard, it's me again. I can't see you. I can only see a little cold, naked little eye looking at me. But I imagine, Kierney, that you're there. Have a great day, you too. Where are you from, Kierney? I don't remember. Yolanda, good morning from Laredo. Laredo, Texas, or Laredo, Cantabria? Probably Laredo, Cantabria. As I walk down the streets of Laredo. You know the song, Yolanda? The streets of Laredo. A ver si empieza con el tono correcto. As I walk down the streets of Laredo. As I walked down Laredo one day, I spied a young cowboy all wrapped in white linen, all wrapped in white linen and cold as the clay. Yeah, tan frío como la arcilla. Cada vez un cadáver de un cowboy, de un vaquero. That's in Laredo, Texas. Eh? Que está in Laredo, Texas is on the Rio Grande, the Rio Grande, which is the border between Mexico and the United States, and the Mexicans call it Rio Bravo, no Rio Grande, Rio Bravo. All right, have you decided what you're going to do to get people learning? It's impossible. I think la gente aprende de verdad. I don't know. 
I don't know. Lo intentaré otra vez in my next life. Yes, I've needed 46 years to come to the conclusion that it depends on you. My job is to open your inspiration, to open your motivation and say, boom, gah. For example, just before starting with Marta here, just before I received a message from a lady or a young, a young lady, I think a young lady from Argentina. And she was thanking me for changing her life. She said, I've been taking English lessons in institutos y academias for years. And she said, with Baugen Inglés 4.0, uno de nuestros productos online, she said, he aprendido más en el nivel principiante que en todos los años. Y ahora quiero ser profesor en inglés y ir a hacerme una licenciatura en inglés. Very good. So, yes, that's my job. My job is to motivate. All right, I'm Ariel. Ariel. That's an interesting name. Ariel. Es un de Shakespeare. Viene de la, de la tempestad. The Tempest. Buenos días, Richard. Veo los programas de tu nuevo curso, pero no puedo comprar los libros en tu tienda porque vivo en Estados Unidos. Uh, los van a poner a la venta en Amazon.es o cualquier otra tienda que haga envíos. Hmm. Lo que... Estamos tratando de resolver esto. Es cosa de eh, el envío a Estados Unidos y la aduana, etc. Hace que sea tan caro que yo creo que vamos a intentar pasarlo a PDF o algo donde puedes tener acceso online o acceso electrónico a los contenidos. Uh, no tengo una respuesta todavía. Uh, Ariel, mis disculpas. I'm sorry. I don't have an answer yet, but continue following the program because really in the program I'm doing now in Spain, it's 26 minutes every day. I'm repeating things again and again and again and again. And finally, in my opinion, you really don't need the book from the point of view of understanding the theory because I repeat in practice so much that the theory becomes evident, auto-evidente, obvio. La teoría se hace obvia por oír 300 veces la repetición de la estructura en cuestión. Por ejemplo, quiero que vengas. Aunque okay, en español se usa vengas, que se usa el subjuntivo del verbo venir. Quiero que vengas. En inglés, I want you to come. Quiero tu venir, literalmente. I want you to come. Quiero tu venir o quiero te venir. Ahora bien, si lo oyes 300 veces, ya es una expresión amiga <ríe> y no enemiga o oh, rara. Y ya no suene chino en todo eso. Pero vamos, Ariel, trataré de ayudarte en eso. Kierne again, and I can use the student's manual book and the others that are in Kindle because I'm, I cannot buy the ones in Televisión Española. Yes, in Kindle o en Amazon tenemos el libro del profes el libro del estudiante. Creo que sí. No estoy seguro. También el translation booklet, eso sí. Y el vocabulary booklet, los dos libros auxiliares están en Amazon, seguro. Ahora, el libro del estudiante es posible que no. Mm. Bueno, Kearney, ya me dirás. All right, continue. No veo, no veo. No me funcionan los botones aquí. Estela. Estela López. Cutijera. That's an interesting name. Good morning, Richard. I'm from Oruro, Bolivia. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of Oruro. Is Oruro near La Paz? Is it near Sucre? Is it near Cochabamba? Is it near Santa Cruz? Is it near Las Salinas esas de sal? Que te... I can't remember. ¿Cómo se llama ese sitio de mm, lago de sal? I can't remember. Uh, Estela, thank you very much from Bolivia. Carlos Mendoza. Hi, Richard. In a month, I will live in Australia. Ahí te acompaño sentimiento. <laughs> no los entiendo ni yo. All right. In a, in a month, I will live in Australia, and I have an intermediate level of English thanks to your classes. Thank you very much. Do you think I'll understand them with your accent, with their accent? Uh, the first weeks, no. You'll have trouble. But very soon, after one month, you'll begin to tune in to their accent. 
Instead of saying, ¿cómo se dice espina dorsal? Spine. Spine. Escrito spine. Pues así pronuncia en España. Spine. Are you from Spine? <laughs> spine. Okay. But don't worry. Ningún acento es malo. Todos son buenos. Todos son cosas que acostumbras. ¿Mm? You get used to them. Y, hay gente, y los australianos, gente de categoría 10. The Australians are fantastic people. So, you're lucky, eh, Carlos. So, good luck in Argentina. Digo, in Australia. Daniela, Daniela, how are you, teacher? Me, I'm a teacher. I'm fine, Daniela. How are you? Karina Conca. That's an interesting name. Thank you very much. Continue, Marta. Ya, ya no veo nada. Kirne, as you said, thank Thanks to you. Gracias a ti. Añádeme la S en thanks. Thanks to you. Uh, there are many people who are... No me cambies ahora. People is, será posible. Cuando me muera, si quieres comprobar que estoy muerto, hay dos formas. Con un alfiler, pinchas en mi piel en algún sitio. Y si no respondo, a lo mejor ya estoy muerto. O bien di, people is. Y me levanto, me despertaré de la muerte para preguntar. Porque, uh, people are. Kierney. <laughs> Many people who are really learning English in the best way. I want, I just want to say thank you for all the effort you put into this project. I'm grateful. But uh, no es un effort. Me gusta. Además, gano dinero, eh? No directamente, pero indirectamente, sí, ¿eh? sí, es lucrativo. No lo hago, bueno, sí, I do it because I like to do it. But at the same time, no me taches de magnánimo generoso al 100%, ¿eh? Yo también necesito ganar mis habichuelas, como dicen aquí. So, no, but thank you very much, Kierney. Danny, good morning, teacher. How are you, Danny? Ya está, ya no hay más mensajes. No. Hey, not many people today. There are not many people watching me today. All right, but in any case, so I can start teaching. Okay, vamos a hacer cosas. I'm going to speak about lamentos, cosas que lamento. Por ejemplo, lamento haber nacido. I'm sorry I was born. I wish I hadn't been born. I'm sorry I was born. I wish I hadn't been born. Para empezar, no es verdad, pero vamos, como se, supongamos estas cosas. These, let's use our imagination. Ah, lamento haberme criado en Texas. I'm sorry I grew up in Texas. I'm sorry I grew up in Texas. I wish I hadn't grown up in Texas. Ojalá no, hubiera, no me hubiera criado en Texas. I wish I hadn't grown up in Texas. Marta Cerezo, hello. Hi, Marta, how are you? It's a real pleasure. I wish I hadn't grown up in Texas. Ojalá no me hubiera criado. Um, I'm sorry I came to Spain. Siento haber venido a España. Lamento haber venido ya. I'm sorry I came. Fíjate cómo se dice. Yo estoy... Yo es, siento vine. I'm sorry I came. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Estoy apenado. Vine. Así lo decimos. I'm sorry I came. Se puede insertar that. I'm sorry that I came. Pero that nos lo comemos siempre. I'm sorry I came to Spain. Ojalá no hubiera venido. I wish. I wish I hadn't come to Spain. I wish I had. I'm sorry I came to Spain. Maria. How are you, Maria? You know, I still struggle understanding Mancunians. Mancunians son gente de Manchester. I'm from Texas. I'm not from England, but Mancunians are people from Manchester. Sometimes I've been living there. I've been living here. I, you, me, I'm, so you're Maria. You're speaking to me from Manchester. Are you a fan of Manchester United or Manchester City? Uh, maybe neither. Maybe she doesn't like football, Marta. But Maria, yes, uh, I've been living here for a year and a half already. It's normal. There are accents that are difficult. Many of the different accents in Great Britain are difficult. Eh? Geordie accent in Newcastle, the Glaswegian accent in Scotland, the Liverpudlian accent or Scouse accent in Liverpool, Mancunian, Birmingham. My God, Birmingham. 
The people in Bur hay dos Birmingham en el mundo, uno en Alabama y otro en Inglaterra. The people in Alabama says, say, I'm from Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. Y los otros, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> It's very difficult to understand them. So I find, personally, I, th I think, in my opinion, British accents are more difficult than American accents. The only British accent that's easy is the received pronunciation. Not even Queen's English. Queen's English can be difficult. Oh, darling, it's been such a diamond. That's Queen's English. So, received pronunciation, which is not a true accent. But in any case, I'm exaggerating. All right. Maria Pilar Genoves. I, Mr. Hi, Senna, hi, no, Mr. Vaughn. The greatest English in the world. Yo no soy English. ¿Será el inglés más grande del mundo o el profesor de inglés más grande del mundo? The greatest, con una T al final, English teacher in the world, perhaps. Thank you very much. No, I'm not the greatest. Tengo por lo menos 50 profesores aquí mejores que yo. Yes, it's true. It's true. Uh, there are 480 teachers in this company, and I'm not the best. All right, Vania. Wow, Vania. I love the name Vania. It's, it's un poco ruso, really, Vania, mi tío, my uncle Vania. There's a very famous play by Chekhov, Uncle Vania. Vania Arroyo, how are you? Torres con Z. Ah, mi, mi boliviana. Oruro is near La Paz and Cochabamba. And Uyuni, the largest salt flat on in the world, is in Potosí. Yes. Hay dos Potosí. There's a Potosí in, in Bolivia y San Luis de Potosí in Mexico. But the Potosí in Bol Bolivia is very, very rich. In fact, many, many years ago in Spain, by the Balum, vale su peso en oro, se Balum Potosí. Esto vale, mira, estas clases de inglés valen un Potosí. That means it's vale una mina de oro. But there's a lot of plata, a lot of uh, silver in Bolivia. Y ahora estaño. Bolivia is the, I think Bolivia is the number one producer of tin in the world. Tin is estaño. All right, so, Vania. Beautiful name. And Torres, con zeta. Con, con, how do you say zeta? Zeta. Yeah, con zeta. Is a, a beautiful variation on Torres. I like it. All right, Kirne again. I don't know why Julia stopped sharing English O'Clock. I miss her so bad. Julia, listen. Julia's an outstanding professional. Her husband recently got a very good job with a very good salary, a very permanent job. And so Julia, whose dream is to start her own business, to be an entrepreneur, empresaria. And so she's going to try. Ahora que tiene la protección de que su marido está con algo fijo y muy bien remunerado, ella va a y la apoyo. Si no le va bien, puede volver. She can come back. She can come back. Voy a dejar las luces de la pista de aterrizaje encendidas. So she can come back and land. So, but I, Julia is, uh, she's the best. And so uh, we miss Julia, of course. Not only in the radio, we miss Julia in her work here. She's working in Baguen Editorial and very good, very important. She's an excellent profession. And I hope she's successful. But if she's not, she's coming back. <laughs> At least I'll try to bring her back. All right, Carlos Mendoza again. Do you watch? Did you watch? the? I didn't. I haven't seen any of the films, and I didn't watch the Oscars last night. I didn't watch the Academy Awards ceremony last night. And I haven't seen any of the movies. I'm curious about this Korean movie. Pa what was the name of it? Paradise? Paradise. Called Parasito. P -p Parasite. Okay. It sounds strange. It's a comedy. Is Comedia Negra debe ser algo así. It must be like a black comedy. That's strange. Maybe it's a little bit like Los Hermanos Cohen. You know the Brothers Cohen? You see, like Fargo. You remember the movie Fargo? I think it maybe is this type of movie. I'm curious about that movie. Also, the Hollywood movie about with um, uh, the crazy director and Brad Pitt. 
but I haven't seen any of the movies yet. I don't watch movies very often anymore, really, to tell you the truth. I don't watch movies. This is a generational question. Eh? As you get older, the movies change, the films change, and they become less interesting for older generations. I remember movies that I loved, my father bah, didn't find them very interesting. And I remember one, my wife's uncle, El Tío Mi Mujer, my wife's uncle, very artistic, musical and very artistic. He, he's a fan, he made a lot of money with his paintings. We took him when he was 80 years old, we, or yeah, about 80 years old, we took him to see Gladiador with Russell Crowe, Gladiator. Ma. It's a different style. It's a different approach to movie making. He said the music is good. He said, I like the music. <laughs> so it's funny, what for, a per, for, what for a 30 year old is fantastic, for a 60 year old perhaps is not. It just changes. Uh, the current generation doesn't have the patience to watch movies from the 1950s or the 1940s. My favorite movies are from the 1950s. My favorite movies, incluido Cine Negro Americano, the, uh, those classical black and white detectives movies were incredible. But people now, the young Marta's generation, bah, que aburrido. It's just different. Things change. Things change. Marta, uh, Maria, you're an amazing teacher, really. Thank you very much, Maria. All right, Dani. Uy, se, se ha salta uno verísima. Verísima. Si hay acento. Si no sería verísima. Verísima, how are you? Good morning. Morning, Mr. Vaughn. I'm late. So sorry. So sorry. Mil, mil disculpas, mil perdones. So sorry. Don't worry, verísima, más vale tarde que nunca. Como se dice eso en inglés, better late than never. Better late than never. All right, Danny Morales, how are you? Salud de Peru. Wow. From Lima, from Piura, from Trujillo, from Ayacucho, from Cochabamba, Cochabamba, que digo. From Cusco, from where? From Arequipa. Where, where, where are you from? From I Ica? Yeah, there are more play many places in uh, Peru. It's a very beautiful, very incredible country. Hugo Palau. Ah, Palau is a Catalan name. I regret instead of I'm sorry. Yes. Sin embargo, yeah, escucha. Antes decía, siento haber venido a España. Lamento que haya venido. Lamento haber venido. Escucha. I'm sorry I came to Spain. Imagina, no es verdad, pero imagina que lamentase haber venido a España hace 40 y muchos años. Yo diría, I'm sorry I came to Spain. Así lo decimos normalmente. Regret is perfect, pero es de alto vuelo, es de alto standing. Es, es, y habría que decir, I regret having come. O sea, lamento haber venido. I regret having Habiendo, literalmente. I regret having come to Spain. I wish not, no. I wish I hadn't. Ojalá no hubiera venido a España. I wish I hadn't. No hay otra forma que yo sepa cuando dices ojalá como expresión de exasperación. Oh, ojalá no hubiera venido a España. I wish I hadn't come. I wish I hadn't come. I wish not, no. I wish not, en este caso, no, no. I wish not. Estoy tratando uh, de... I, I cannot think of a, a case where you say, I wish not. I wish not. No, I hope not. I hope not is, espero que no, espero que no pase en el futuro. Ojalá no pa te pase nada. I hope not. But no, but no. I regret is correct. Pero es, nadie lo, bueno, nadie. Doctor en filosofía lo diría. I regret not, I regret having come to Spain. O si estoy escribiendo, a lo mejor uno va I regret having come. But when I speak, I'm sorry I didn't come. I'm sorry I came. I'm glad and I'm sorry. Solo dos. Me alegro de haber venido, siento haber venido. I'm glad I came, I'm sorry I came. Me alegro de haberlo hecho, siento haberlo hecho. I'm glad I did it, I'm sorry I did it. Me alegro de haberme casado, si lamento haberme casado. I'm glad I got married, I'm sorry I got married. Ahora, if, si yo digo a un amigo... I regret having gotten married. Maybe you're asking, estás bien hoy, Richard. Tú hablas así. Es demasiado. 
es como decir pretencioso o es como decir algo muy rebuscado. I regret. Pero regret es una palabra fantástica, un verbo precioso. I regret. Pero en este caso diríamos casi siempre sorry. All right, Hugo, thank you very much. Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Daniela, I'm not well today. I'm sick. Pain in the lower back. Well, I'm sorry. When I mean that, I have pain everywhere. I mean, at my age, if you wake up in the morning and nothing hurts, it means you're dead. Okay, it means you're dead. So, yes, painful. I have upper back pain, cervicalis. I have lower back pain. I have pain in this elbow. I have pain in this knee. Oh, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> My pains are not so strong that it doesn't affect my disposition, okay? I imagine if I had very strong pain, it would probably affect my disposition. So I'm fortunate in this case. Small pains, bearable pains. Bearable, aguantables, soportables. To bear, bear, also means aguantar or soportar. I can't bear teaching English. No soporto enseñar English. Bear. Unbearable is insupportable. Yeah. Me acuerdo de una esposa de un alumno mío decía, my husband, con un malísimo inglés, my husband is insupportable. <laughs> Mi marido es insupportable. I said, no, Ines, my husband is unbearable. Pero probablemente se diría, I can't stand my husband. No aguanto mi. Yeah, mi marido, I, I can't stand my husband. To bear. Okay, Daniel, Daniela, pues... Que se te pase, por fa. All right, Marga, the expression in English, I want you is weird to hear when you tell a, a boy, wait a minute. In Spanish, it's too sweet. I want you, I want you, significa te deseo, más que te quiero. I want you es como más sexual, un poco. I want you, te quiero poseerte, de arriba abajo. I want you. Ahora bien, I want you se usa mucho en quiero que vengas. En ese caso, no. I want you to come. Quiero que me escuches. I want you to listen to me. En este caso, nadie cae en, en la otra significación posible. I want you. I want you to watch me. I want you. I want you to pay attention. En inglés, la atención se paga. Recuerda. Recu recordad. La atención, la atención no se presta como en español. I want you to pay attention to me. I want you to watch me. I want you to... Study. I want you to make an effort. I want you to do the best you can. I want you to make an effort. I want you, I want you, I want you. Ahora bien, si yo digo de sopetón, I, I say, um, Patricia, I want you. It's a bit direct. It means te quiero poseer de arriba abajo. Entonces, cuidado con ellos, según el contexto de la persona. All right. So, uh, now, te quiero, I, I love you, of course, is te amo, te quiero. I love you. All right. So let's go on. Maria, laugh out loud, both. Uh, I wonder what she's referring to, Marta. I never remember. L O L, esos, esos tres letras, significa reír en voz alta. Laugh out loud. All right, both. I wonder, I don't remember what you're referring to. Dani, I saw a conference university, says Don Bosco, and I saw you. Me habrás visto a mí. I saw you in a conference or in a speech, a presentation in the Thess University, Don Bosco, in 2010. Well, that's a long time ago. That's 10 years ago, man. Yes. Ha llovido mucho, eh? It's rained a lot since then. Danny, but thank you very much. Caridad, hola. Caridad Gómez, hola. Doble A al final. All right, Caridad, it's a pleasure to have you here. Is this your first time? Is this your first time here? All right, Aldos. I, see, it's Alo Ai. Dos. Hi, Richard. Thanks for your free class. One question. Why, when somebody dies, con ese, con alguien muere, somebody dies in the U.S., quítala, in the U.S., they say passed away and not just died. Okay, primero. El verbo pass away. Away todo junto. Júntame away. No es pasar una manera o un camino. Es pass away. Pass away es fallecer. Es una forma más suave de decir morir. Uh, por ejemplo, to pass away. 
To pass away means pasa a otro estadio, pasa del mundo, este a otro mundo, al cielo, means to pass away. To pass away. También se to pass on. To pass on means ha pasado a otro, otra situación, otro estado. Es curioso porque la muerte y la vida, se dice el verbo estar, estoy vivo, estoy muerto, estoy. Cuando yo aprendí español, a los 13 años, la profesora, para explicar la diferencia de ser y estar, decía estar son situaciones temporales y ser situaciones permanentes. Soy hombre, es permanente. Entonces digo, pues, él es muerto. O sea, no, está muerto. O sea, ah, los, los hispanohablantes entonces creen en la reencarnación. <risa> Porque si no, está muerto. We say, ok, to pass away. To pass away es fallecer. To pass away será por motivos de um, enfermedad o similar. En un accidente no es to die. Because to pass away no implica lesión o daño personal. Aunque sí puede haber alguien que sufre un accidente de tráfico y a los tres meses en el hospital muere. En ese caso sí, pass away, por complicaciones y passed away. But if, you, if, if I kill you, you die. You don't pass away. You don't say, uh, he, 12 people died in the explosion. 12 hombres, 12 personas murieron en la explosión. They don't say 12 people passed away. To pass away is fight. ¿Cuánta gente falleció en el, la explosión? No. ¿Cuántos murieron en la explosión? So to pass away is a softer way of saying to pass from the living state to the dead state. It's to pass away. It's a soft way. It's una forma suave de decir morir. It's to pass away. All right. Kublai Khan. Oh. Ya no recuerdo quién, no recuerdo quién eres. I'm not sure. Kublai, Kublai Khan, el nieto de Genghis Khan. Good morning, Mr. Vaughn. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm doing, how are you doing? Mitz, ¿qué tal estás? How are you doing? I'm fine. Dani, educado en inglés, your, educado en inglés, your conference. I have given 300 speeches. Bueno, exagero. 200 speeches since I just don't remember. I don't remember. All right, but sorry, Danny. Danny Morales, good morning, teacher, desde Peru. All right. Where in Peru? From Lima, from Miraflores, so, or from uh, the different areas of, estoy olvidándome. Yes, yeah, San Isidro, <laughs> Miraflores. Antes conocía más. But of course, the two most famous are Miraflores and San Isidro. Or are you from Piura? Or are you from... Ayacucho, who knows? Or, or are you from Cajamarca or from Trujillo? There are a lot of wonderful places in Peru. All right, Ariel, tengo el coleccionable de, de francés. Bonjour. Tengo unos cuantos amigos que lo quieren comprar. Si, si lo ponen a la venta en Kendall, creo que... Good idea. Thank you very much. Tomen nota, Marta. I'm going to say, Ariel. Ariel, I'm writing it down. Ah, yes. Bonjour, our French collectible in Kendall. All right. Ya está. Thank you very much, Ariel. Tendrás comisión. All right. Claudia, Claudia Guerra, good morning, early in the morning. Come on. It's afternoon now in uh, English and American time. The afternoon starts at 12 o'clock. All right. And I'm hungry. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. I had a... I was, uh, I was planning to have a big dinner. No, excuse me, a, a light dinner last night. I'm gaining weight. So I need to eat more lightly, especially for dinner. And then the people I live with decided to order pizzas and had a pepperoni pizza. Oh. And so I decided to skip breakfast. I decided to skip. Saltar, claro, saltar is to jump. Como el salto altura, Ooh, to jump, the jump. The high jump is in salto altura. How did you skip? Is saltar algo por omitirlo. This is saltar el desayuno hoy. I said is skip. I said S-K-I-P, to skip. And so I said, is, so now I'm hungry. Yeah. And I still have 25 minutes with you. Jesus Christ, Marta. Lo que hago por los demás. Yeah. 
Oh, bajo esta carga. Yes, what to, to do for you. But in any case, uh, it's, um, thank you very much, Claudia. But it's afternoon now, English and American time. Mike, Mickey, Mike Abroad, says, Será Miguel el extranjero. Mike Abroad. All right. Hello, Richard. It's a pleasure to watch your lesson live every week. I would like to know whether there are defective verbs in English. Thank you in advance. Mira, uh, for your answer. Greetings from Poland. Uh, Mike is in Polonia. Where? In Wrocław? In Warsaw? In uh, Krakow? In Gdansk? La expresión thank you in advance. A mí no me gusta, personal. Eso es cosa personal, eh? Se ve mucho. Gracias por anticipado. Yo prefiero thank you. El in advance parece un poco pres presuntuoso o presumido. Presumes que, sabes, no es, pero vamos. Thank you. Defective verbs. Se usa eso a veces para lo que se llaman modal verbs. Can, may, might, could. But I'm not sure if that's the correct title. If you ask me about defective verbs, it's can. Can you? Could you? Should you? He may. He may come. Puede que vaya. He might come. Puede que vaya. Um, puede que venga, pero he might, he may. Modal verbs is what I understand is defective verbs. Otherwise, Mike, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an expert. Technically, I'm not a linguist from the... No soy gramático. I'm not a grammarian. I'm not a purist. I teach English in a practical way. A very, very practical way. Because theory... Abruma. Theory brings you down. Don't get lost in the theory. Es una maleza. La teoría es maleza pura. Necesitas machete. Para ir, uh, abriendo paso y desbrozando un camino, que es la práctica. Practice, practice, practice. And when you talk about modal verbs, auxiliary verbs, phrasal verbs, irregular verbs, regular verbs, defective verbs, déjame, aprenderé otro idioma, busco otro idioma. <laughs> when you start worrying too much about theory. Of course, theory is important. It's important to know. El presente se forma así, el pasado se forma así, el condicional se forma así, eso sí. Pero una vez sí, vale, de acuerdo, ahora dilo mil veces. Como Rafa Nadal con mil reveses y mil derechos por día. Ok, that's how you become, you develop. All right, Patricia, hello frío, hello frío Cádiz. Bueno, ¿hace frío hoy en Cádiz? Huh? Maybe, I doubt it. So, podemos ver, what's the temperature in Cádiz today? All right. Los angloparlantes muchas veces dicen Cádiz. For Cadiz. Patricia, hello, from, será from. Hola desde Cadiz, creo que es que le ha salido frío porque tenía el alfabeto español en su teclado. All right. Ah, from Cadiz, luego sé. Ajá, el que corrige, el que rectifica es sabio, dicen aquí. All right. Este sabio es rectificar o algo así. Thank you very much, Patricia, from Cadiz. Laura Villar, hello, Laura Talledo. All right, I love your second last name. I love both names. I love all three because I like the name Laura too. Laura, Laura. Ese nombre es bonito en ambos idiomas. Laura y Laura. Some names are pretty in one language and not in the other. It's interesting. For example, Patricia. I prefer Patricia in English. But in any case, Isabel. Hello, Richard. Sube, Marta. No veo nada. Hay muchos comentarios. All right. Whoop. No demasiado. Creo que hemos saltado a alguien. We skipped somebody, creo. Ah, no. Estamos bien. Isa Pérez. How are you, Isa? Yes. Hi, Richard. I'm from Bolivia. Potosí was very rich in silver in the past. Nowadays in Potosí. Uyuni is the biggest reserve in litio. Lithium. What's very important? Es una lástima. You know, the countries that are the richest in natural resources are often the poorest. Or there's, it's, it's unfair because of poor um, social and political organization and also a certain 
uh, dominant class controls all of the. It's 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 a real uh, challenge in Latin America, in many countries in Latin America, to create a big middle class, and to. Um, but it's the same in Spain, for example. Jaén is a province in Spain, and it's probably in the ten least rich. No me gusta la palabra poor aquí porque no hay una provincia pobre en España, pero el menos, uno de los menos desarrollados. Jaén. However, 20% of all, of all the olive oil in the world is produced in Jaén. Jaén produces 20% of the olive oil in the world. Spain produces 40% of all of the olive oil in the world, and half of it is in Jaén. However, Jaén is not a rich province, so something's not right. And something's not right in many countries in the world was similar, Bolivia included, of course. Peru has a lot of Chile. Well, there's a lot of uh, countries. But in any case, uh, Isa, thank you very much from Potosí. Ah, in Uyuni is the biggest reserve in lithium. Thank you very much. Have you ever known about Salazar de Uyuni? Yes. I've never been there. I've never been to Bolivia. But I've heard many things about it. I have a very good friend, una boliviana, nacida in Cochabamba, criada in Santa Cruz, um, Elizabeth Eli. She lives in Badajoz here in Spain. And she attends my radio class once or twice a year. She's a wonderful young lady. She's the human resources manager for a company for, uh, how do you say, centros geriatricos, so geriatric centers. And uh, she, spoke, she has spoken to me many times about the Salar de Uyuni. But it must be very, very interesting. I'd love to go. All right, that's my next asignatura pendida, my, my next trip to Bolivia. Jose Mario, how are you? Hello, Richard. Sabogal Peña. Very interesting name. Sabogal. Yes. Hello. How are you, Jose? Claudia. Cirito. Hello, Richard. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. No hay de qué. Y ni pa' de qua. Don't mention it. Not at all. Lo más corriente es... Lo más corriente para mí es you bet. Cuando alguien me dice gracias a la cara, no por escrito. Hey, hey, really. Hey, thanks a lot. You bet. You bet is tu apuestas. No tiene nada, ninguna conexión con la, el agradecimiento. Pero se dice muchísimo. You bet. I thank you so much for the class. You bet. Hoy en día en Estados Unidos cada vez más se dice, se oye no problem. Ningún problema. Como si fuera un problema. No problem. Thank you very much. No problem. There are many ways of saying prego, grazie, prego. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. De nada. Il n'y a pas de... No hay de qué. All right. So, Claudia, thank you very much. And Maria Pilar Genoves, otra vez. Are you... Do you agree? Ooh, are you agree, Temato? Do you agree? Do you agree? Claro, en español se dice estás de acuerdo. But in English, concuerdas. Do you agree that the seventh art is dying? Cinema. I don't, cinema is the seventh art. No, I don't think it's dying. It's just changing. I don't think it's dying. Well, excuse me. Eh? The seventh art defined as going to the cinema and watching a movie in a movie theater. Perhaps that's in, in Fasi no Terminal, pero cerca de, maybe. And another thing on TV or on other, on handsets and things, People are moving more and more to series. Consumiendo en más estas series televisivas. Many of them are quite good. They're very addictive, by the way. I've only become addicted to one, Breaking Bad, and I saw them all. But I have not become addicted to others. But some people get addicted and watch 20 in a row. That's And so I think maybe television series could kill movies or cinema in the future. Video kill the radio star. Se llama Radio Sigue. <laughs> yeah, so you'd say, TV series kill the cinema. Maybe. Who knows? Interesting question. All right, where are we? Kirne again. Soy poco soy. 
I don't know if I should continue these classes if I have only a few viewers. Kirne, could you please give us a piece of advice for this St. Valentine's Day? Well, just love the people you love. Yes, show your love to the people you love and show appreciation and goodwill to the rest. Aprecio y buena voluntad. Show appreciation and goodwill to the rest. A largo plazo, a corto a veces no. Pero una actitud positiva, pecando más por inocentón que por listillo. A largo plazo, pum, paga altos dividendos. A corto a veces se aprovechan de ti, te toman el pelo. Yes. Pero hay que pensar qué actitudes son las adecuadas para durante 40 años ser feliz y tener éxito. Y hay actitudes que a corto plazo, no necesariamente. Es como, un, lo he dicho en otro día, es como una tendencia bursátil en el mercado de valores, en el stock market, cuando ves una, una periodo de alza de precios en un mercado de valores, verás que hay altibajos siempre por el camino, su, conforme sube, y esos altibajos, así es la vida. ¿eh? Una vida de 40 años de éxito es así, de acuerdo, pero si con lupa mes que han sufrido aquí, han tenido disgustos y decepciones, y ha, le han robado un dinero, le han tomado el pelo, le ha, se han aprovechado de ellos, bu, bu, bu. pero vamos, a largo plazo, con las actitudes adecuadas, de positivas, es imposible fracasar, es imposible, a largo plazo, en 40 años. You recuerda esto. All right. So, St. Valentine's Day. Show love to the people you love, of course, of course. Yes. Uh, Maria Vieco. Wow. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, Maria. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to have you with me. More, more, more. Vico. Wow. Vico. Aguilar. Hola desde... Italia? Sí. Es Italia. Es muy pequeña la, la bandera. So, no, México. Por eso México. Claro. No, yeah, porque no se ve el... Of course, the Mexican flag shows a cactus and a, a, an águila comiendo una serpiente. It's in the... In medio de la, del lago Tenochtitlan. Uh, but, I, but the Italian flag, I think, looks similar. I'm going to check that. But I think it's Mexico. Well, if it's true, Mexico lindo de la Sierra Morena. All right, let's see. Italian flag. Italian... A ver si es parecido, flag. Yeah. Let's see the Italian flag. No, it's different. Bueno, different. No, no, it's not. Mira, that's the Italian flag. Okay. Now, you see? Imagina en medio, aquí, un lago, un cactus. Creo que es un cactus, ¿no? No me acuerdo. Un águila con una serpiente en la boca. Sería... Entonces, la bandera mexicana. So the Italian flag and the Mexican flag are very similar. Let's see. Let's put the Mexican flag. Mexican. Mexican flag. The Mexican flag. Yes, sir. Ahí está. You see, it's casi como the Italian flag, pero con... Hmm? Can you see the eagle in the middle? A ver. El águila. No sé si ve por la luz la serpiente en su, en, sus, en su pico. It's a very interesting flag. This is, probably, <laughs> this is probably the most interesting flag in the world from the point of view of an interesting image. There are many flags that are interesting. The American flag is interesting, the stars, the stripes, etc. But this flag is more interesting, uh, the Mexican flag. And uh, other flags that are interesting, I can't remember, but there are a lot. All right, so Vico, thank you very much from Mexico. De la Sierra Morena, cielito lindo. All right, Isabel, hello, your accent is very clear. I speak standard American accent, a standard American accent. Isabel, thank you very much. Annette, su un poco. Annette from Argentina, from Salta. Que al norte. Wow, she's very to the al norte Tucumán. Casi frontera con Bolivia, eh? Annette. 
Thank you very much. It's, I wish congratulations on your daughter's wedding. I have pictures. Me mandaste fotos, eh? All right. Good luck. Enjoy Argentina. Fernando Diaz, Richard, it's nice to meet you online. Best wishes. You are the best teacher. I'm the second best. <laughs> no, I have other teachers who are better than me. Uh, Lilo, uh, por cierto, nos quedan 52 comentarios o hemos visto 52, Marta. Cuando dice eso, no sabes. All right. Porque yo a la una y cinco, pam, tengo que parar. All right. Llevo cuatro años. Lilo, Lilo Van Lan. That sounds like a Dutch name to me, a Flemish. Llevo cuatro años viviendo en Países Bajos y mi profesor ha sido, y mi profesor han sido tus clases. Ah, thank you. Yo he sido tu profe. All right. Mi inglés te lo debo a ti. Thank you y tus clases. Aunque el inglés no se acaba nunca, aún me queda mucho. Jamás pensé que iba a poder comunicarme en inglés. Muchas gracias. Well, thank you very much. Lilo, tu apellido suena holandés, eh? Uh, is that really your surname? Lilo doesn't sound holandés. Lilo could be Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Lilo, Brazilian. But Van Lan, it sounds very Portuguese, uh, very uh, Dutch. Holandés en inglés es Dutch. El, el país, the Netherlands. Many people say Hol Holland, Holanda, uh, but we say Dutch in the Netherlands. All right, well, good luck, Lilo. And I hope you continue improving. Isabel Garcia Trias. No veo nada, Marta. Sube, sube, sube. And what about to deceive? <laughs> Isabel is with. Hoy le toca la muerte. All right. Deceased means decesos. O sea, decesos means. Es una palabra técnica. Deceased. She's deceased. Cuando uno ya está muerto. Se dice deceased. O sea, ya no está, ya no es persona viva, ya es persona muerta, es he's deceased. Es una forma técnica y se usa menos, ¿eh? She's dead. She's dead. She has died. Or she is, uh, she passed away. Or she has passed away. Yeah. She has met her maker. Ha conocido su hacedor. Se dice a veces. That's a bit. Uh, she's died. She's deceased. Yes, deceased is a formal, technical word for dead. She's deceased. Isabel. You're worried about a lot of fine points, matices, entre uno y otro. Die, died and dead. She died. Murió y por lo tanto está muerto. Él murió, por lo tanto está muerto. He died, therefore he's dead. He passed away. Therefore, he's dead. He's deceased. Yeah, of course, deceased. Pero eso, eso probably lo digo una vez cada 15 años. I say dead una vez cada semana, maybe. I don't know. But in any case, Isabel, thank you very much. Mike abroad again. Wow. I wonder what that means, Mike. Bye. Es bueno. Baja otra vez. No, no me, no abandones a Mike. B-Y-D-G. I don't, Mike has written a word. He lives in Poland, I think. He said he was in Poland, Kroki. Be God's... Wow. That requires... That's a lot of consonants together, Mike. That's interesting. All right. Good luck with that pronunciation. Jose Manuel from Spain. Hello, everyone. Jose Manuel Iglesias. Thank you very much for watching, Jose Manuel. Continue. Sube ahora. Son soles. Son soles. All right, Martí. Marti, como Jose Marti, Jose Marti, the Cuban poet. Be careful with craving at lunchtime. Yeah. Yes. That's true. I eat too much. Soy glotón. Gluttony is my only deadly sin. There are seven deadly sins, what you call pecado, pecados capitales. There are only seven. I only suffer gluttony. I don't suffer lust, nor pride, nor envy, nor wrath, wrath is la ira, wrath, nor sloth, sloth is la pereza, nor greed, greed is la avaricia, only gluttony, la gula, that's my capital sin. But I do a lot of exercise, and I have a good metabolism. Si no, estaría como un tonel, no cabría ni en esta pantalla. 
si no hiciera el ejercicio y tuviera alto fa, rápido matala, ma, metabolismo metabolism yes sir ok Marta no veo nada o sea es que no veo porque hay otra cosa en medio eso quita eso all right now uh, Yolanda, you hit it on, you hit it, you just hit on it, Richard. The correct emphasis should be put on the practical side of English. That is what defines you. Yes, sir. La teoría te tira para abajo. La práctica te eleva al cielo. Pero hay que practicar. La teoría se hace fácil. Praxis y después teoría. No teoría y praxis. La forma francesa, latina, española, de abordar el aprendizaje es teoría y práctica. No práctica y luego la teoría wow, es fácil porque ya ah, tiene sentido ya cae todo en su sitio all right so thank you very much Yolanda next wow no veo quién es me, me has saltado demasiado Alejandro how are you Alejandro Garrido llevo viviendo en Países Bajos desde hace cuatro años all right ah eso es el que tenía Van Van Gaal o algo el inglés que hablo es gracias a ti y tus clases. Recuerdo que me levantaba cada mañana a las 5 para estudiar tus clases antes de hacer mi viaje. Jamás pensé que iba a poder comunicarme en inglés. Muchas, muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Alejandro. It's, um, mi labor es hacer que el inglés sea atractivo y que la gente lo desee. Es la labor de cualquier profesor. La responsabilidad única de un profesor es hacer que la asignatura en cuestión o la, el área del saber que enseña Uh, sea atract uh, atractiva. Si el profesor mola, como dicen en España, molar, para mis amigos y amigas de Bolivia o de México, de Perú, no, no entienden mola. Mola quiere decir que es muy atractivo. Si el profe mola, la asignatura mola. Si el profesor es atractivo, la asignatura es atractiva. De pronto, López de Vega gusta. Si el profesor gusta, López de Vega gusta. Si encandila, si el profesor encandila, el álgebra es bonito, es bonita. El álgebra es bonito. <risa> álgebra es femenino. No, es masculino. Es femenino o masculino. El álgebra es masculino. El álgebra es duro o es dura. ¿Eh? What do you say, Marta? Uh, Spanish is impossible. But in any case, it's the teacher. If the teacher is outstanding, any subject is interesting. Any subject. Hasta la... Confección y elaboración de páginas, las páginas amarillas de los guías telefónicas se hace interesante si el profesor lo dota de, o sea, si te encandila, si te hipnotiza, si wow, te das cuenta del de trabajo que hace falta para hacer un libro de este tipo, no te das cuenta, el secre hay secretos tecnológicos aquí dentro para parar un tren, ¿eh? Entonces, sí, sí, pues cuéntemelo. De, de pronto, Gus interesa hacer guías telefónicas. That's the teacher's job. Eric, Erich, Eric Gonzalovic. Good morning from Orellana, Peru, Ecuador. Wow, Orellana. The climate is so hot that I had to sleep with the windows and doors open. Opened? No, open. Quita la E de. Open. Si dices, he abierto la ventana, entonces sí, I have opened the window. He, mira, es un poco como, he soltado al perro, por lo tanto el perro está suelto. He soltado, suelto. Ahora bien, he aflojado el tornillo, por tanto el tornillo está flojo. I have loosened the screw, so... The screw is loose. He abierto la ventana. Por tanto, la ventana está abierta. I have opened. Escribo opened. I, como lo has puesto tú, uh, Eric. I have opened the window. So, therefore, so, the window is open. N es simple. Sin ed. Open. Ok. Ok. <laughs> Literalmente, he abrido la ventana. Por lo tanto, está abierta. Pero no se dice abrido. Me acuerdo que alguien me dice, ¿cuál es la diferencia entre died and dead? Y el alumno, pues, died es, mo es morido y dead es muerto. Y lo entendió. Ajá, ya entiendo. Uno es participio, otro es adjetivo. Si alguien ha muerto, está muerto. O sea, si ha morido. Entonces tú has abrido la ventana. Eso es opened, como lo has escrito tú. 
Por lo tanto, la ventana la dejaste abierta. Open. All right. I'm sorry, it's so hot in Orellana. Este es del famoso Orellana, el... Orellana el de Trujillo, España. Era uno de los primeros conquistadores ahí, Orellana. ¿Era Jorge Orellana? I can't remember his first name. I can't remember his first name. Bajó el, la, el río Amazonas antes que Lope de Aguirre. Orellana, creo. I'm trying to remember my history. Okay. Yes. Mr. Vaughn, do you think that mastering the four conditionals, ¿cuál es el cuarto? I no sabía que había un cuarto condicional. Would contribute to make you look smarter? No. No. Mastering the verb to be and the verb to have, to go, and to want, makes you smarter. Mastering the conditionals, no. No. Para mí hay, ¿cuál es el cuarto? Uh, si me pagas, iré. This is, that's the first conditional. Si me pagas, iré. Si me, pa me pagaras, iría. That's the second condition. Ayer, si me hubieras pagado, habría ido. That's the third condition. ¿Cuál será el cuarto, Marta? Eric knows more than me. What, what's your secret, Eric? What's, what's the fourth conditional? Yes. Hmm. Don't worry too much about the conditionals. Yeah, so especially, the most important is the first conditional. Si la veo, se lo diré. If I see her, I'll tell her. Si vienes, uh, te acompañaré. If you come, I'll go with you. Uh, si, si vuelves a la semana próxima, me, te sintonizaré. I'll tune in. That's, that's the most common. The second conditional son casos hipotéticos. Si supiera alemán, iría a Alemania. Si fuera presidente, bajaría los impuestos. Uh, that's ha cuestiones hipotéticas. Los usamos una vez por semana. Y el pasado condicional, si mi coche no hubiera, no hubiera arrancado esta mañana, habría venido un taxi. Eso lo decimos una vez al mes. So remember, focus on things you need to use every minute of the day. And don't focus on things you use once a month. But in any case, Eric, mastering the conditional is a good mental exercise. Agiliza, agudiza la mente. Y agiliza la mente. All right. No more, no more messages, please. In tres minutos o cuatro tengo que terminar. Marta, thank you, Eric. Irene, how, Irene, con Y. Cow, me encanta con Y. Uh, thank you very much, Irene. Estrella Monedero, me suena mucho ese nombre. Conozco una estrella ¿eh? que, and I, y conozco una, una que se llama Monedero. Hello, always. You make my day. Sí, sí. Me alegras el día. Is you make my day. You make my day. Not you make me a day. Eso es que te confecciono un día. Toma, un día. Estrella. Oh, but in any case. Money Penny. Yes, sir. Monedero. Thank you very much, money. Uh, digo Mali, Estrella, Star. Kublai Khan, would President Nixon be convicted had he not resigned? Yes, yes. Yeah. President Nixon, Richard Nixon resigned as president because it was very clear uh, that he would be impeached. Convicted, tal vez no sea la palabra correcta, impeached. Convicted is in the tribunales, no en el Senado americano. He would be impeached. Yes, would the 10th president, John Tyler, Well, John Tyler, I, I don't remember if he was impeached or if there was a danger of being impeached. Uh, the only presidents who have been in danger of being impeached were uh, Andrew Johnson, the vice president when Lincoln was assassinated, uh, Richard Nixon, who would have been impeached for sure, Bill Clinton after the Monica Lewinsky scandal, and now Donald Trump. Uh, they're the only people, but I don't know the case of John Tyler. You know a lot of history. <laughs> John Tyler was the vice president uh, in William Henry Harrison was elected president. And William Henry Harrison died three weeks after the inauguration. So John Tyler became the president immediately. It was funny. Well, funny. No es gracioso que muera, pero es que curioso. Uh, William Henry Harrison insisted on giving his inauguration speech outside. And it was cold and rainy. 
He caught a cold, and three weeks later he was dead. Complications from the cold. And so it's, um, it's a bit dangerous to give the inauguration speech. And John Tyler became the president. Pero, pero tu, uh, Kublai, your dates are wrong. John Tyler was president in 1841, 42, 43, 44, por ahí. No en 1824. In 19, 1824, uh, in 1824, the president was John Quincy Adams. Yes. In fact, in 1824 was the election, and it passed from James Monroe, Monroe, como Marilyn Monroe, James Monroe, to John Quincy Adams in that period. And John Quincy Adams was a president for four years until 1828, 29. Hay que poner la fecha de inauguración, no la fecha de elecciones. 1829, and then Andrew Jackson, and then Martin Van Buren from 1837, 1841, and then uh, William Henry Harrison, who died, and John Tyler. So... De, de, yo creo que se invertido los dos últimos, los dos últimos dígitos. 42, no 24. Probably. Ok, más Marta. Tengo que parar. Sube, sube. No more, no more. Sube. Daniela, don't say anything. Daniela, all right. <laughs> Rocío. Hi, Richard. I'm from Madrid. Nice to meet you online. I love the way you convey the classes. No sé si convey, the teach. Convey is... Transmitir las clases, pero claro, es que no decimos eso, to convey the classes. To convey my ideas, to convey my feelings, eso sí, but not to convey a class. I like the way you teach the classes. It's so helpful and practical. Thank you. Next, Rob Grams. There are lots of viewers, but they aren't talking. Come on, guys. <laughs> Daniela, don't say our welcome. Ah, our welcome. Daniela, mm, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't connect to your previous one. You are welcome. Quedas bienvenida. You're welcome. Claudia, congratulations, Richard, on. Congratulations on. No se congratulations for. No pasa nada. Se entiende. Congratulations for. You know, suena mal, but it's on. Congratulations on deciding to take care of your health in relation to meals, etc. Claudia. I don't take care of myself. Well, I do exercise, yes, as we'll see. But, soy un glotón. I eat too much. I eat too much. The secret of losing weight is eating less, more than doing exercise. Both. It means to burn more calories than you take in. But, it's more eating less is more important than doing exercise. Alejandro. Están aplaudiendo a lado. Alejandro. Garcia, recuerdo, Esteban Garcia Restrepo, I remember you. Hello, Richard. Seguimos, es que tengo que ir. I'm, uh, okay, Julio. Hello, Richard, from Houston. Wow, fantastic, Julio. Thank you very much. Alexis, thank you from Colombia. I like, thank you very much. Alexis, son soles. Lilo from Lilian, Lilo de, Lilo de Liliana. Ah, okay, Lilo. Son soles, thank you. Ross, good morning from Venezuela. Wow, from Barquisimeto, Maracaibo. Valencia or Caracas. Rocío, gracias, saludos de Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Thank you very much, Rocío. Alejandro Garrido, so, Lilo, soy yo. <laughs> es que estaba desde mi otra cuenta sin querer, yo soy español de pura sangre. All right, it is pura sangre española. Okay. Ross, I have a child. She is six months old. She is, and I want to teach her English. English con M mayúscula. Pues, uh, Rodéale del sonido del inglés en audio. Que el inglés acaricie su oído una hora al día como mínimo. Para que cuando cumpla un año haya absorbido ya de forma indirecta, pasiva, 360 horas de inglés mínimo. Y ya verás que será oído finísimo para ¡pum! Cuando quiera aprender inglés de verdad ¡pum! Como una trayectoria supersónica. All right, Estrella, you always make my, make my day. <laughs> Son soles. It's great only suffering one of the seven deadly sins. It's what I say, deadly, mortal, deadly sins. Estrella, you made. You, you, you kiss, okay, made. All right, Diana, I remember you. 
Tuxi que molas, yo molo, <laughs> o muelo. ¿Se dice que muelo o molo? Molo. <laughs> All right, thank you, Diana. Esos directos cada cuantos, los, uh, cada lunes, every Monday at 12 o'clock, Spanish time, Spanish time. Manu, what's the difference between so and therefore? Ninguno. Therefore es más sofisticado, más rebuscado. So es más. Así que, por lo tanto, por tanto, that's so. Therefore is por ende, <laughs> como consecuencia, <laughs> por consiguiente, etc. Es un poco más alto. Uh, María, ¿podría poner un ejemplo de eventually? Si sí, eventually means al final, tarde o temprano. Mira, si me escuchas a diario, tarde, eventually, al final, acabarás aprendiendo inglés bien. Eventually, significa antes o después aprenderás este idioma si me sigues a diario. Eventually, al final, tarde you let's see hello nice to meet you i'm from colombia wow from Barquis from barranquilla or from bucaramanga or from bogota or from cali or from cartagena or from medellin where all right yolanda hasta la fecha todo el lunes, todo el lunes a las 12 yes cero condicional hay un condicional cero pues la semana próxima me lo dices ah sube 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 tengo que ir if you eat too much fat you increase your cholesterol General statement, cero condicional. Ok, I understand now. Si pasa, presente, presente. Si comes demasiada grasa, se te aumentará el colesterol. Ok, that's the zero. All right, now, I knew, yo sabía eso, no me acordaba. I can't find a good example now. Your example is very good. Rocío, first practice, tengo que parar esto. First practice, and then, o sea, tiene sentido. Thank you very much. Small steps. Fátima, wow, Fátima Mendieta en Madrid, ¿dónde? ¿Dónde pueden tomar la clase? I'm not sure I understand you. Ask me next week. Marta, tengo que parar. I'm sorry, I can't answer the rest of your questions. Um, thank you very much for following me. I have to go. Otherwise, I'll be late. So, I wish you the best for this week. Study English. And uh, I hope to see you again Monday of next week, the 17th of February, I believe. So take care and uh, all the best. Mark that.